Ναι, έτσι έχει μάλιστα αριθόν τελάνι. Αυτό είναι το καλό του σβήνεις. Κοίτα, δεν μπορεί να τους δει. Ιρλανδ. Marlene Bonici on behalf of Minister Shikluna, Malta, has entered the conference. Wolfgang Schäuble. Natos. Yes. Has entered the conference. Welcome. It is our TV. Jeroen, we should be complete. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, welcome everyone. The, um, this second conference call in two days has the purpose to come back to the two letters that were sent uh, yesterday by the Greek Prime Minister, one to me and one to the institutions. Um, uh, but I think it is inevitably that we, inevitable that we will also reflect on the last speech by Prime Minister Tsipras this afternoon, which was again a very clear political start. Um, uh, the two letters, the first one consisted of basically two main proposals. One to ask for an extension. Of course, we are beyond that point, and we also made that clear yesterday. And secondly, to start talks on a uh, new program, new financial support from the ESM. The second letter uh, basically said that Greece could, um, uh, were, is prepared to accept the last proposal by the institutions, which were published on Sunday, but with a number of changes, um, which I will ask the Commission uh, to uh, reflect upon. Um, I think we um, need to hear from the institutions how they assess the letters, but also the uh, situation, the political situation at the moment uh, in Greece, and then I will turn to, uh, to Janus uh, to further explain uh, what the situation actually is. Uh, but as agreed yesterday, uh, the Commission would, with the others, uh, look at the letters first. So, um, Valdis, are you in the call? No, it's Pierre. Pierre, hi. Could hi. you uh, respond to the letters and how you see the current situation? Okay. Uh, since yesterday, the, the circumstances have obviously changed. Uh, Greece is now in arrears to the IMF following a non-payment, and the EFSF program has expired. Uh, the Commission 
um, in response to non-payment to the IMF, and they have to, it's responsible to propose a reaction to member states under the Greek loan facility. Uh, I, I read that Close has done the same for the SSF. And to, 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 we discussed that this morning in the college, and with the agreement of the Commission today, we recommend uh, that member states reserve their rights to, to make a decision once there is more clarity on the situation. Yesterday, uh, you, you asked the institution to prepare an assessment of which is proposed amendments to the list of prior actions published on Sunday. And this has been done on, on the basis of uh, yesterday's letter, uh, and the views I will outline uh, are shared by these three institutions, but of course everybody can express feelings. Uh, firstly, um, I must underline that the document uh, published on Sunday uh, relates to discussions on the expansion of the FSF program. Moreover, the, the worsening circumstances, plus the request of, for a new uh, two-year ESM program, which will involve larger financing needs, means that changes will be needed compared to the reform package, uh, which was previously envisaged. Uh, any uh, new ESM program would, of course, have to be fully in line with the uh, provisions of the ESM treaty. As a general remark on Greece's proposals, many of them, uh, from our point of view, lack clarity and specificity. So uh, further discussions with the Greek authorities will be needed to fully assess their impact. Uh, our teams uh, have not yet had the chance to do uh, this. Uh, some of the individual proposals could have merit as part of a comprehensive package. Uh, a proper assessment is uh, nonetheless required for fiscal financial Amen. aspects to make sure that any proposals which we can... We can ...has have entered them. the conference. If I look more specifically uh, at the proposals in order, first on VAT, uh, the proposal to keep the VAT discounts for islands goes in the wrong direction, uh, not only compared to the proposals of the institutions, but also uh, earlier proposals of the Greek authorities clearly now view it backtracking. In addition to a lower uh, fiscal yield, the proposal would represent a missed opportunity to simplify the VAT system. Uh, a large administration is required to administer these discounts. On fiscal uh, structural measures and pension, uh, the government is proposing longer phasing periods for a number of the measures, for example, the elimination of uh, nuisance changes on, and the ECAS social top-up, to be credible. And this could be a way uh, we need to clarity on when reforms will be legislated and implemented. Uh, we have been open uh, to implementing, but not to legislating a later phase out uh, of ECA, uh, provided uh, compensating measures are, are, are found. On the labor market, uh, the, the proposal also deviates from the proposal of the institution. And finally, on, on product markets, uh, the letter is more specific on some reforms uh, compared with the Greece's early uh, proposals, but they are less ambitious than the institution's proposals. Uh, so uh, more explanation should be uh, given on proceeding with these uh, measures, for example, in response to recommendations of the OECD on the uh, competition uh, toolkit. We have not been uh, able to uh, evaluate some of the proposals as they have not been discussed in the so-called uh, Brussels group. Uh, the proposal to split uh, ANMI, the electricity transmission company, into a, a separate legal entity under state majority ownership also needs uh, further uh, careful scrutiny. To, to sum up, I would say that at first sight, uh, the measures proposed uh, would not be sufficient to, to meet the agreed fiscal targets. Uh, we would need uh, further clarity on a number of the ideas enclosed in order to assess them properly, uh, particularly as some of the measures have not been uh, discussed before in the Brussels group. But uh, there are some progress here and there, uh, especially on, on the pension area, uh, and the Commission stands ready to continue uh, working along with the other institutions on a credible reform package for Greece that reflects the changed situation. Lastly, uh, following uh, yesterday's Greek request for a new ESM program, we are preparing the risk assessment reports, and we stand ready to prepare an assessment of LGBT for an ESM program and to give us the mandate to do so. 
uh, obviously the, 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 the recent speech of the Prime Minister, uh, well, uh, tends to give also some indications on when this could be done. Right. Um, uh, is the ECB in the call, Benoit? <coughs> yes, I'm here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Do you want to comment on the two letters and where we stand in your uh, perspective? Yes, uh, thank you, Jeroen. And let me uh, first apologize on, on behalf of Mario, but uh, we have a governing council going on uh, as we speak. Um, First, let me agree with uh, Pierre uh, that the revised uh, list of prior actions uh, submitted by the British authorities um, is uh, weaker than the proposal of the three institutions. Uh, so further discussion would be warranted uh, if your group uh, wants to explore uh, this avenue further. Uh, second remark, uh, we also must be aware that the uh, circumstances, the environment has changed uh, since last week. Yes? Can you hear me? Is the IMF in the call? Can you hear me? Thank you, Pinua. Uh, Hello. If you are still hearing me, maybe I'm the problem. No, no you're right. Okay. You're a good solution. <laughs> I can hear you. It's humor, yeah? I can make you humor. Hello. No, but now we can hear you. Okay, so shall I continue? This is Benoit, this is Pat, what is it? Okay, okay. So first point, uh, the, uh, the the proposals are weaker than the uh, than the uh, uh, proposal of the institution. Uh, second, the environment has changed um, due to the further delay uh, in, in the implementation of the measures. Also, uh, the uh, damage uh, caused to the economy through the uh, turmoil of the last days. So this will need to be taken into account when calibrating the growth projections and uh, also the uh, bank uh, recapitalization requirements uh, in the new program. So when you combine the two uh, facts, uh, this results in uh, larger financing needs. Uh, this results in, in larger financing needs than, entered, uh, the um, than uh, under the memoir. So Jeroen, I was just saying that uh, the, the proposals can be explored further, but as they, as, as they stand, uh, they uh, uh, widen the fiscal gap. And also the environment around us has changed, uh, and uh, both factors combined lead to larger financing needs and the worse on DSA. Uh, that said, we understand that discussions to fine-tune the proposals are still going on at a technical level, and as Pierre said, uh, we stand fully ready to continue, to continue working. Mm -hmm. I have two... Uh, Additional remark. Entered the conference. So the first additional remark is that uh, a third program cannot be limited only to a list of higher actions. Uh, so uh, the, the, the proposal uh, of the institution was meant to conclude the review. It was not meant to serve as a basis for an entire program. So of course additional uh, work would be needed to, uh, to build a, a fully fledged, uh, a fully fledged uh, a third program. And the second remark is that uh, it is essential in our view that the Greek government commits to uh, service all its financial obligations fully and timely, consistent with the Eurogo statement of the 20th of February. And the wording of the letter is not so reassuring in that respect. It says that uh, the government is committed to service its external debt in a manner that secures the viability of the Greek economy, growth, and social cohesion. So this would uh, deserve more clarity. I stop here. Sorry. Thanks, uh, Benoit. Uh, uh, Yannis Varoufakis did respond on that last uh, point in yesterday's call. Uh, can I turn to the IMF? What their assessment is of the letters that came in uh, and the current situation? Yeah, thank you, Julian. All is I would like to apologize to the main directors at the board meeting uh, on Greens, actually, uh, uh, right now. So uh, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, uh, explain how we see it. And then we also we have some technical difficulties, so I did not hear what uh, Benoit had to say. Uh, 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 I, I heard what uh, Pierre said, and I, uh, uh, I am in broad agreement uh, with that. Uh, we, uh, 
we certainly welcome that the authorities have, have moved to the right direction in a number of areas. But uh, uh, overall, the proposals fall short in the sense that they are they are not consistent with the agreed targets uh, 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 for this year and, 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 and beyond. And therefore, we think that there is a we need further discussions, we need further, further clarification, we need to see uh, the details and uh, we need to see the overall and why, uh, and we would, uh, we would need to discuss uh, offsetting off uh, measures. Now, we can, of course, ready to do so and, and, and welcome that there is a, 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 a new dialogue, uh, 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 but uh, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are not there. Thank you. certainly the understatement of the day. Um, uh, can I turn to Klaus, Klaus Radio? Thank you, Jeroen. I have nothing to add. I agree with the institutions. Klaus, could you also say something on uh, the discussion about uh, preserving our position um, as creditors? Yes, of course, that I can do. And um, here we discussed it in the EWG before this call. We, I sent a letter this morning to Thomas Visa. This is the necessary requirement when there is an, uh, a non-payment to the IMF um, so that um, our board of directors can take the appropriate action. We agreed that this should happen on Friday. Um, I recommended in my letter that we should reserve our rights because that seems to be the most appropriate course of action for the next um, few days, given the uncertainties. Um, there's nothing in our treaty that says how long such a preservation of rights um, can last. Um, we agreed in the EWG that it would be reviewed um, on an ongoing basis. At least once a week, the um, EWG would, would review it or more frequently if necessary. Um, and I think there was a broad consensus to, to um, move in this direction. Thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Um, and I would first like to turn to uh, Jan Farofakis, if he's on the call, to ask him to explain not so much the letters, or he can, of course, make remarks on those, but uh, the present political situation Yes, thank you, Jeroen. Uh, the last, uh, last speech. Yes, hello. I, I hope you can hear me. Um, can you hear me, Jeroen? Yes, yes okay. can. Thank you. Right. Let me uh, begin with a few comments on uh, the proposed prior actions of the Greek government, which were submitted to you, which uh, now uh, the institutions have had a chance to look at. I believe they were also discussed in the Euro Working Group just uh, prior to this uh, teleconference. We believe that uh, the SLA change, the prior ac action amendments that we're pro proposing uh, fall well within the maximum flexibility uh, of the MOU process as described uh, repeatedly to us by the institutions. Uh, very briefly, let me um, mention the eight points which uh, are pertinent here. One concerns uh, the discount on VAT of the islands. Uh, it is our estimate, and I believe the institutions agree on that estimate, that uh, maintaining that discount along the lines of uh, also what happens uh, on island complexes everywhere else in Europe, including the Canary Islands and so on, that the fiscal impact will be about 340 million of maintaining this discount. We have proposed uh, equivalent measures that uh, um, uh, pertain to uh, tax on uh, economic on rents, on uh, real estate rents, as well as a very small increase in corporate tax. The second point uh, of difference, the second amendment, concerns uh, the um, request, the, the request, the, the requirement that. Uh, uh, individual business uh, owners should um, advance immediately 100% of their uh, uh, tax payments. We have shifted that from 2016 to 2017 in order to soften the blow 
to them. Uh, the phasing out of diesel tax subsidies for farmers, uh, we would like again to have uh, um, a, a, a glide path leading to that uh, in 2017. On the question of pension reform, both regarding the secondary pensions as well as a CAS, the solidarity uh, rather small uh, add-on to the lowest of the low pensions, um, we are uh, again in tune what, with what the institutions, institutions are re requesting, except that again we are uh, recommending, uh, requesting uh, a, a, a longer period of adaptation. As far as product markets are concerned, I would like to add here that uh, the Greek government, as is probably known to most uh, colleagues, has entered into a firm collaboration with the OECD. The Secretary General of the OECD and his staff have uh, uh, committed to a joint uh, program with Greece for creating, creating, designing, implementing, and monitoring the implementation of many more product market reforms and other kinds of reforms, like, for instance, anti-corruption, procurement reforms, and so on. Uh, and we would like these to be considered very positive steps on our government in order to pursue the, um, uh, the reforming process, the structural reforming process, which everybody wants to see being incorporated in Greece. Uh, finally, the, uh, a couple of more points. I won't tire you more than is necessary. Uh, they, we had certain uh, objections from the Ministry of uh, Maritime Affairs regarding ferry transportation on, on security and safety uh, grounds. And finally, the question of the ADMIA, the electricity uh, sector uh, uh, reform, where we are proposing that it is split from the PPC but that it is not privatized. This is the final change amendment that we are recommending. Again, let me say that we believe that uh, the, these uh, amendments fall well within the realm of flexibility, which is part and parcel of the review process. Now, you asked me, Jeroen, to comment on the political situation. Let, let's, let me be succinct on that and to the point. The referendum was called because we felt, as a government, that we did not have a mandate to answer the institution's call to accept this SLA and the particular financing package as it was given to us. We said we're going to put it to the Greek people next Sunday, uh, who are the final arbiters of such decisions. Again, let me repeat what I said yesterday. We are fully committed and absolutely determined to implement the verdict of the Greek people on Sunday. So if the yes vote wins, we will do whatever it takes in order to make sure that the institution's proposals um, of the 25th of June, if the institutions feel like amending them, uh, we will accept these amendments as well, will be signed, uh, sealed and delivered within a very, very short space of time. Uh, the speech by the Prime Minister today, today was a speech which was uh, meant to say one thing, and that is that the concern of the government is that whatever prior actions we undertake must be sustainable. There must be prior actions that are consistent with uh, the reforms that Greece needs and must be embedded in a program whose financing component uh, is uh, giving us hope, not just us, but to investors, to consumers, to um, uh, the markets, that Greece will be out of the woods in the course of the agreement that we're signing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before um, asking the ministers for their uh, opinion, um, can I make a few remarks? I think um, the question of uh, the extension, of course, has uh, passed uh, the old program as well. Therefore, also the validity of the proposals that were on the table by the institutions uh, has uh, 
gone to this extent that they were meant to come to a positive review of the old program. The old program is gone, it has not been finished, there will not be a positive review. Secondly, in terms of the request for a new program, of course, uh, as Greece is a member <coughs> of the Eurozone and of the ESM, we will take it into consideration. And perhaps the, those proposals will then be of use, and also the proposals by the Greek authorities can be of use. The key question now is, given the political circumstances and the speech of the Prime Minister again today, uh, whether we should undertake any action on that request at this point or await the referendum uh, in Greece. Um, I will ask for some comments from the ministers uh, before saying any more. Who would like to uh, respond to uh, the letters and the political situation? Thank you very much. Je pense que tu as très bien résumé la situation. Il y avait un programme en cours. Il est maintenant terminé. Et ce dont nous parlons, ce sont des éléments qui nous permettront de négocier un nouveau programme. De ce point de vue-là, les propositions qui ont été faites par la partie grecque, dans l'une et l'autre lettre, sont très utiles à la fin. Um, so, uh, thank you, Jeroen. I think you very well summarized the, the situation. Um, there was a program that was underway, and now this program is finished. So what we're talking about now are elements for the negotiation on a future program. And from this point of view, proposals by the Greek authorities are part of what can be used for that. La question qui nous était posée aujourd'hui, c'était de savoir si le contexte politique était suffisamment justifié pour nous permettre de donner dès maintenant un message politique positif sur l'ouverture de ces futures négociations. Uh, the question that was uh, on the table today um, is, has the political context been sufficiently um, modified, I mean, sufficiently different for us to send right now a positive a political signal as to this future negotiation? Nous avons été nombreux à travailler uh, avec de très nombreux contacts pour faire en sorte que ce contexte politique puisse être suffisamment modifié pour permettre une vision positive et une expression positive aujourd'hui en Eurogroupe. Je constate simplement que cette situation politique, compte tenu de ce qu'a dit le Premier ministre, que je respecte bien entendu, n'a pas été modifiée et qu'il n'est donc pas possible aujourd'hui de donner de signes positifs dans l'attente du euh, résultat du référendum. Um. We have been, I mean, a, a number of us uh, have uh, worked quite hard uh, with a lot of uh, contacts with uh, uh, all stakeholders to work towards uh, changing uh, the context, the political context sufficiently that we could have a positive political expression today at the Eurogroup. What I uh, take, and uh, notably taking into account uh, the speech by Prime Minister Tsipras, with uh, fully respecting uh, uh, what he said, is that it doesn't lead to a sufficient uh, uh, modification of the political context. So from there on, it's not possible to have this positive expression from the Eurogroup today. So I finished. I'm finished. Okay, merci. Uh, other colleagues? Jeroen, Johan? Go ahead. Uh, good evening to everybody. I would like to uh, make three, three remarks. First of all, given uh, the situation as described, I think uh, there is indeed at this point in time, given the referendum, nothing really to negotiate about. Secondly, with respect to the referendum, I think that the argument that is uh, so often repeated now that the Greek government does not have a mandate to do this uh, negotiation is uh, really running away from the responsibility of an elected government. And with respect to the argument that a, a yes vote would be implemented by this government, 
I repeat what I said in earlier meetings, I found this to be really incredible uh, as a state uh, of uh, as a state of play. Now, my third point would be uh, that basically we are now in any case in a very different world than we were one or two days ago. First of all, the program has expired irrevocably uh, and Greece is secondly effectively in default now. Moreover, the economic and financial conditions of the country have substantially further deteriorated, not least because of the backtracking by the Cyprus government on uh, what had been achieved under the second program. So, and I conclude, whatever has been on the table in terms of proposals and measures no, needs to be revisited very, very thoroughly Martes, in light Martes. of this entirely and fundamentally different situation. Thank you. Thank you. Other colleagues? Here on Maria Luis, may I ask again? Portugalia. Hello? Here on? Here on? Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I just wanted to say that uh, listening to what has been said by the institution and also by some of the colleagues, um, uh, our position is that we fully respect the decision of the Greek government to call for a referendum, as I mentioned at the last meeting, and therefore we should wait for the outcome of this referendum before we decide what to do from then on. And uh, I'm not sure whether this is necessary at this stage, but I would like to say that we agree with the recommendation by House Regling on the reservation of rights. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will come back to uh, the point of the reservation of our, our rights uh, at the end. Uh, I believe there was uh, quite strong consensus in the EWG on this. So maybe we can just come back to that in the end. Uh, if anyone would feel different than the proposal from uh, Klaus Regling, then they might express it. Who else can I give the floor? Hello, Jerome. Luis? Hello, Jerome. How are you? Uh, Hi. How are you? Uh, you know, very short, uh, uh, I would like to ask Janis uh, uh, whether it's correct that Mr. Sipra has said today that he urged a no vote uh, in the referendum this Sunday, and that this no vote, no vote means pressure on creditors. I would like to, if he could elaborate on that. Janus, would you like to respond? Janus? Yes, uh, Jeroen. The, yes, uh, Jeroen. We, we all know how negotiations uh, um, unfold. We are often told in the Eurogroup, we the Greek side, the Greek representation, that uh, X, Y or Z parliament does not permit our colleagues to enter into a discussion about matters which are of absolute importance to uh, the sustainability of the Greek program, like for instance uh, uh, the funding issues, uh, Remember the issue that I raised last week in Brussels about dipping into the HFSF fund in order to pay the S&P bonds of July and August? We consider that to be highly problematic regarding the bank recapitalization program. But we were told that uh, a number of parliaments uh, have uh, uh, prevented colleagues from even entering into such a discussion. So the notion that uh, a sovereign body, whether it's a parliament or a people who vote through a referendum, uh, exert pressure in the negotiations amongst us, ourselves in the Eurogroup is not unheard of. It is part and parcel of what we do. And this is what Prime Minister Tsipras said. Uh, Louis, I will return to you. Thank you very much. Um, no, no further comments? And no. Oh. Peter, Peter from Slovakia. Peter, go ahead. Hi, Eric. So, we're briefly, now we see the situation that the, the Greek government is asking for a new program, but on the basis of 
proposal that it's actively campaigning against in a referendum. So it's really a delicate environment. So therefore, I cannot imagine to discuss the ASM program before the referendum is over. That's clear. I'd like to support the Johan and, and Maria Luis. Thank you. That was very clear. Other colleagues? Hey, Carlo here. Hey, Carlo, go ahead. Uh, just to add my uh, frustration to the idea that, uh, yes, I guess at this stage it's inevitable that we wait for the referendum, although, to be frank, uh, if there is a no victory, I'm still wondering it is a no to what, since, of course, the initial referendum was called on a set of proposals which is now, in a way or the other, beyond our shoulders, number one. Number two, as someone has already said, the new proposal, the new request from the Greek government is about an ESM program, which is, of course, as you have mentioned in your own, different in terms of uh, density, features, and requirements than the set of measures required to complete the review. So uh, I would like to ask from uh, Yanis whether there is anything more precise we can attach to the yes-no vote. Uh, is it a yes-no vote to a new ESM? Is it a yes-no vote to the old measures, to yes to the new measures? This, in any case, whatever the result of the referendum will be, adds to confusion and does not uh, provide credibility in any negotiation that we will engage. Uh, Janet, I believe there was a question for you. Yes, thank you, Jeroen. Clearly it was. Uh, Carlo, you asked uh, what would a no be in aid of, a no to what? Well, firstly, the ballot paper is very explicit. It refers to the 25th of June documents that were tabled and which were offered to the Greek government from the institutions, by the institutions. Uh, our recommendation of a no is not so much I mean, technically and legally concerns this particular set of documents, which may or no, may not be on the table. But if you want me to answer in terms of the spirit of the exercise, we are saying no to an agreement which, in our estimation, and I think in the estimation of many people, is simply not sustainable given the funding package that accompanies it, given the debt sustainability analysis that is accompanying it, and given the fact that were we to agree to those proposals, we would have reviews every month up until November, and in parallel to those reviews, we would have to have another negotiation in order to discuss a third program by the end of November. This would create um, an unsustainable agreement as far as we are concerned, so we are recommending to the Greek people to say no to that. A new program with the ESM that can be agreed to on the basis of the SLA and the prior actions that are on, on the table as, as we speak would be utterly sustainable. And of course, to that, we would say a big n yes after the referendum on uh, Sunday. Can I add a question? Yes. Uh, uh, do you, does, as it stands, does the Greek government have a mandate to request for an ESM? That's Ka my question. Kier Carlo, we do. We do. In response to an earlier question, why don't we um, make our minds up as a government? Uh, why are we saying that we don't have a mandate? What we said explicitly was we did not have a mandate to sign on an agreement which we consider to be unsustainable both in the short run and in the medium run. But to request a new ESM program which is sustainable, we certainly have a mandate for that. Uh, Wolfgang, if I may. Well, can, can I first make one remark in terms of the process in your group? There, it, it needs to be very clear, there was no agreement. The only thing there was were prepared documents by the institutions which they could support, uh, which were prepared with a view of coming to an arrangement or an agreement in the Eurogroup. It was never uh, achieved. There is no agreement to put to the Greek people. Wolfgang, go ahead. That's a 
exactly what I want to say. Uh, it's a situation, therefore, uh, uh, I share the confusion of uh, 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 Piacalo because the Greek referendum takes place on a yes or no on proposals which are not still longer uh, valid because the pre precondition for this proposal is over. Therefore, we are in a totally new world. And we are not only in a new legal world, because the ESM 20 is different with uh, preconditions, but we are also in a totally uh, new world in, in substance, because we need a totally new program. And of course, uh, the situation has not been improved uh, since uh, uh, we drafted the last program. That has to be in mind that I share all the view of all these who have said before the referendum has taken place, nothing can be uh, decided in the Euro uh, Sorry for this. Thank you. Um, I'm beginning to see a common ground for a conclusion. Uh, are there any colleagues who want to speak? Jeroen, this is Ali. Go ahead, Aris. Um, okay. Even though I do share um, well, almost all the comments of the colleagues, uh, let me say these. Um, the, the Greek people um, are, are feeling a sense of, uh, of uh, desperation and they are expressing in every conceivable way um, their wish to, to see Greece stay in the Euro and to maintain the ties with the EU. Uh, so even though everything that has been said is actually correct, valid, I do feel that we owe it to, to the Greek people uh, uh, who have, in fact, mobilized in an effort to, to see Greece remaining in the Euro, uh, to send a positive message, even out of this Euro group, uh, uh, in the direction uh, that we can uh, initiate uh, the process of re-examination uh, of the Greek request. Uh, I think we should all agree that there is no way for Greece to, um, to effectively remain in the Eurozone uh, without yeah. an agreement on the third program. Uh, definitely, that cannot be agreed today. Uh, definitely, uh, as uh, Benoit has said, uh, this will in fact require uh, a fully fledged MOU and not just a list of prior actions, uh, no disagreement, but at the very least, uh, we could send a positive message that the request will be examined, uh, uh, the process of uh, negotiating the details will be initiated uh, because very simply I think this will uh, this will give hope uh, this will give hope to the Greek people and will probably help uh, what is a common cause Thank you Harris Any other colleagues? Jeroen, might I interject for just one moment? Yanis Sure. I just wanted to, to, to say that in response to your, uh, your comment, we did not put an agreement to the Greek people. You are right. On the 25th of June there was no agreement. But there was a very specific proposal and the time, as you, the, the clock, as you were saying and everybody was saying and I was saying, was ticking away and time was running out. We put that proposal to the Greek people. If the Greek people say yes, then we have an agreement along those lines. Now, the fact that these proposals, after we uh, called for a referendum, might have been withdrawn or expired afterwards, well, this is an important point. But it is not a crucial point, because the proposals that we are discussing now, the SLA, well, it's very close to what was put on the table by the institutions. And what we are now facing is a prospect of a new program which is a lot more palatable, palatable and sustainable. That Greece will stay in the Euro is uh, a foregone conclusion as far as we're concerned. Our position, our place in the Eurozone and in the European Union 
are non-negotiable. A no on Sunday will mean that we are going to have to speed up the agreement, the process leading to agreement, to an agreement that is mutually advantageous and which we feel that we have a mandate to see through and which we can look at you in the eyes and say we are going to implement it. If we were going to say yes to the proposals of the 25th of June, we couldn't do that because we do not believe that even with the best will in the world, uh, it wouldn't be sustainable. And just one last point, uh, Jeroen. A colleague uh, uh, questioned our credibility when we say that in case of a yes, we shall implement the agreement. Please do not question our credibility on this. We are committed and unreconstructed Democrats. And if the Greek people on Sunday deliver a yes vote, we shall do, as I said, whatever it takes to implement that yes, even if it means changing the configuration of the Greek government. Any other comments at this point? I will try and formulate our conclusion. Um, I think that we have to realize that the current situation is that the whole program has expired. The proposals that were all put on the table last weekend by the institutions were never part of an agreement in the Eurogroup. They were never put to the Eurogroup for me because there was no agreement. And the Eurogroup never discussed financing needs, debt sustainability, etc. So that, that again has to be very clear. Uh, and therefore, what the Greek government is putting to its people is hard to understand. Um, the uh, request to extend the old program, of course, is no longer valid, no longer realistic. The uh, proposal to uh, get a new financial support from the ESM uh, will be taken into consideration. We will start procedures, but given the current political situation and, as the Greek government says, its lack of mandate, uh, we must await uh, the referendum on Sunday. Um, I will draft a short letter along to stop you. America, you responding to the two letters, well, at least formally to the one letter that I received, taking into account that there is also a second letter. Um, specifically on the proposals in the second letter, I listened carefully to the institutions, and Pierre said some may have merit, some are vague and deserve more clarity, but some are also uh, weakening the proposals. I think it was Benoit who said they widen the fiscal gap, they worsen the DSA, and they create larger financial needs. I will just take note of that, of those comments from the institutions. We will not take any decision, nor on the old proposals from the institutions, nor from these amendments on the Greek side. Uh, they, they can become of use part of a uh, further talks, but that is for consideration after Sunday. Um, Harris has made the point that we should also give off a positive message to the people of Greece. Um, and I think that is possible, but make, making also very clear that we are no longer negotiating the Greek government. Uh, and we are no, no longer asking the institutions to negotiate with the Greek government between now and the referendum. Um, I think it, the Greek people also deserve to have clarity of what is actually happening at the moment. Uh, and I don't think what con a that's a personal remark. I don't think that shit. the Greek Prime Minister today has given that clarity uh, in his speech. I think we should give that clarity. There will be no further talks. Uh, we will not ask the institutions to further discuss proposals uh, until after the referendum. That would be, in my mind, uh, the outline of the letter and the communication after this call. I'm open to your comments. Jeroen, can I just interject for a sec? Yanis. Yanis, please. I didn't hear any of our colleagues suggest that 
there should be no further discussions, negotiations, discussions. I think that given that this government, whether the answer of the Greek people, the verdict of the people will be a yes or a no, is committed to uh, discussing the SLA, the prior actions, you have them in front of you. We heard from the institutions that they are um, a positive step in the right direction, even if they're considered by some of the institutions to be weak or um, to, to, to contain bits and pieces which are uh, not welcomed by them. Nevertheless, and also taking up on what Michel, Michel Chapin was saying, um, it's clear to us that it would be um, a good idea for everyone involved to continue finding common ground on the possibility of a new ESM program. And it just doesn't seem to me that your is consistent with what I heard from many uh, of our colleagues. And in particular, if I remember correctly, Pierre Moscovici said something along the lines of what I'm saying now, that we should continue to discuss and we should continue to have a discussion with the institutions in particular to assess the fiscal uh, aspects of what our proposals and so on and so forth. So I don't think that you, your wrap-up is a genuine wrap-up. It's your opinion, which is, of course, highly respected. But that's another matter. Well, uh, I, of course, disagree. I listened carefully to uh, Pierre, who said that the Commission stands ready uh, to, uh, on a request of you to further work, etc. The question is whether at this point we will do such a request to the institutions. And my proposal is quite clear. I uh, listened your carefully to what the colleagues have said, but I'm open for more comments. Okay. I would I would like uh, to I would like to say Jerome that I fully agree with your uh, summary. Summary and uh, therefore was exactly what we have discussed and uh, in fully in line with you had what you have said. Yeah, yeah speaking um, I would like also to, to support you here because it's true that I said that we are ready to do the job anytime you ask and you, you would ask. Uh, but you, I also said that uh, due to the new situation, we uh, all understand when this could be done. And uh, I share your analysis. Thank you. Other comments? Oui, uh, you know, uh, Michel. Just a moment, I'm in agreement with the conclusion. Compte tenu du contexte politique qui n'a pas changé, à la suite de l'intervention du Premier ministre. Il y avait des discussions en cours pour essayer de faire en sorte que ce contexte politique soit modifié, il n'est pas modifié. Ces discussions n'ont plus aucun sens jusqu'à l'issue du référendum. Um, just a word, Jérôme. Um, um, uh, um, uh, I agree with your conclusion. I take into account, again, the political context which hasn't changed uh, following the speech by Prime Minister Tsipras. There were discussions ongoing to change this political context. It hasn't, so there is no point to continue them until the referendum has taken place. The propositions that have been apportées by the two letters of the Premier Ministre are of course the propositions that we must consider. Mais nous les considérerons lorsque le gouvernement grec, à l'issue du référendum, nous fera une demande de nouveaux programmes. Ce sera une base, une première base, des premiers éléments pour euh, notre discussion. Mais aujourd'hui, il n'y a plus de discussion possible jusqu'à ce que le référendum ait permis au peuple grec de s'exprimer. Uh, the proposals that were uh, put on the table by the two letters by Prime Minister Tsipra, of course, uh, we should consider them, and uh, we will do that, but we will do that only when the Greek government, after the referendum, um, will make a new formal demand for a new program, and those letters will be first uh, pieces, I mean, first elements. Uh, for the discussion, but right now, today, um, and until the referendum, until the Greek people will have had their say, uh, there's no need for discussion. <laughs> Any other comments? No. Yeah. Uh, Jeroen, Johan. Hello. 
Just for the record, I want to say that uh, I fully support the conclusions that you laid down. Thank you. Me too, Jerome. Please. Please. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do some here. Suchan. Suchan, go ahead. Yes, I support. Uh, you you can Yes, hello. Yes, I support your conclusions. Peter, Peter, I would like to support you also. Thank you. John. Yes. Uh, I support your uh, conclusion too. Uh, Kieran. Maria Louise. I support your conclusion too. Thank you. Your own Michael. I support your conclusions to your own. I support your conclusions, Jeremy. Same, same, I support you too. Thank you, Hello, Jerome. I'm sure I'm speaking. Go ahead. We fully support. Uh, am I safe to presume that uh, there is broad support? Um, I will take into consideration and try to also express it in communication. Um, um, our feeling, um, our understanding, our empathy for the desperation of the Greek people at the moment, something of the words that Harris used. Uh, so I think we need to make that clear also. Um, and I will uh, send a short reply along the lines that I mentioned to the uh, Prime Minister of Greece. Um, let me, before we come to a close of this meeting, make two points. Uh, first, um, on the point of uh, reserving our rights under the GLF, the Greek Loan Facility, and the EFSF. Um, uh, given the fact that we took some of the non-payment to the uh, IMF and recent financial development, uh, I think we can confirm in principle our decision to reserve our rights under the Greek Law Facility and the EFSF for the time being and follow the procedure that Klaus Nagelink has proposed. Thank you. Hey, Jerome. Wolfgang. Oh. Ah, go ahead. Oh. I agree that uh, for the time being means that we will uh, uh, reconsider uh, at the next occasion after the, after the referendum. Yes. I think that is uh, also what Klaus was referring to. They got their marching orders on um, American, and they're all running now. I think we can wrap it up for now. I want to thank you all for your contribution. Um, and one more point I want to make. There is a worrying sentence in the first letter about uh, Greece's commitment to service its external, external debt. So I will also put in my letter a reference to what the Greek authorities agreed on on the 20th of February. Uh, there, the Greek authorities in that Eurogroup statement reiterated their unequivocal commitment to honor their financial obligations to all their creditors fully and timely. Uh, I think it's very important to make absolutely clear how we see that uh, commitment. Uh, that just a second, uh, on this issue, this is Yannis. Let me reiterate what I said yesterday in our conference, that uh, we are very happy to have this particular sentence amended as required to include timely as well as fully regarding the meeting of our obligations to our creditors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.